Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk about The Walking Dead Season 7, the note that Rick and Aaron found, and the hidden meaning behind it all that might just make you appreciate Season 7, the first half, just a little bit more. I know I definitely do. With that being said, we're going to talk about spoilers, so I hope you saw the first eight episodes, and we're diving right into this with Olivia's death in Episode 8. You guys already know, if you watched my previous videos, I wasn't all that thrilled about it. I'm kind of starting to get worried that, or at least I was getting worried before I realized what it seems like is going on with the note. I was getting a little worried that the writing team was saying, okay, you know what, we give up. You can have your comic book moments, but we're going to give you guys a surprise as well. This way we can uh, have the best of both worlds. Comic book moment, surprise. Like in episode one, we had Abraham, and then, oh, Glenn's gonna be safe. Got him! They killed Glenn. And then we have episode eight. Okay, we're giving you the Spencer scene, guys. Got him! We're gonna kill Olivia. So I was starting to worry that would become a pattern. However, I decided to move on past this topic, and I was going to pull some foreshadowing and some symbolism out of Rick in the jail cell that Morgan built in Season 6, looking at the note and the hatchet before Michonne comes in to speak to him, and I think some comic book fans will have some type of idea what direction that video would go in. But while I was thinking about the paper, and I was thinking about the symbolism, something hit me like a ton of bricks. In order to understand where my mind is at, let's take this back to Episode 1. You have two of the characters, two of their family, friends, and loved ones, killed, you have one taken, and then you have Rick who is left uh, partially broken or broken down, at least definitely broken down. Now moving forward, Rick can't multitask. He only has a week. He has a lot on his plate. When Negan shows up, he's not walking up to Michonne saying, you know, what do you got for me? You're the reason these people died. He's not going to walk up to Rosita and say, hey, what do you got for me? Whoop -de whoop No, he's going to walk up to Rick. So Rick right now, he just can't multitask. He's going to focus on one thing and one thing only, and that's keeping his people safe. He's going to push all those thoughts of fighting, all those thoughts of hiding guns and all that shit. He does even mention that he thought about it, but he's got to fight those because one wrong mistake, you know, one savior idiot in the woods spying, catching on them, doing the wrong thing. Next thing you know, they're back on their knees lined up and one or more of them is gonna die. So Rick is focused. And times get tough. It gets a little desperate. Rick and Aaron go on this run and they get lucky and they find this area where supposedly, or at least we're assuming, the most of us are assuming that a guy dies and he was a negative bastard and negative Nancy because he left notes all around that said, congratulations, you win, but you still lose. Now this note is extremely important because this note is symbolic for everything Rick and gang at Alexandria has been going through since episode one to episode eight. So they get back, the saviors find the note, and they beat Aaron. Now this is very important, and I thought this was just a scene to show that this deal was extremely fragile, but it's more than that. This moment where they beat Aaron over nothing is to show that this deal is fragile and dangerous. They could die at any moment, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, as long as the saviors decide that that was a messed up thing, or they just have an off day, and they want to take it out on them. The beating was also necessary for Rick as well, because we could pull some symbolism from the scene where someone says, now nah, move on, Rick. Rick is still shown as being worried. He still wants to uh, stop what's going on, and it gets to the point where the girl even pulls out a gun. The entire scene is showing Rick that Rick isn't in the position to fight back, even with someone sticking a gun in his face. This is a clear sign. This is clear symbolism for the world he now lives in, where they are always unarmed, and they are always at the mercy of the saviors. And on top of it all, the beating is very important for us, the viewers, as well. Because it's not just us watching Aaron get beaten. It's us having that paper beaten into our heads. That this is important. This is important. Take notice. This is important. It's like a visual cue. Or at least it's an aid to a visual cue. And what the hell are they trying to beat into our heads? The note. The note. Rick is looking at this note with a drop of Aaron's blood on it, and he's thinking about the events. He's thinking about what just took place. He's thinking about how they were desperate. 
they needed something and they won they got something they got this score they brought it back for negan and guess what the events in episode eight mirrored the events in episode one you have abraham dead spencer died you have someone interrupt which was Daryl punching Negan. Then you have Rosita shooting at Negan. Then you have someone killed because of that person's actions, which was Glenn in episode one and Olivia in episode eight. And then you get somebody taken. Daryl was taken in episode one. Eugene was taken in episode eight. This is not recycling the storyline. This is clever writing showing Rick Grimes in this moment that he won. But when he came back, He's right where he was in episode one. So essentially, he's still lost. And he's going to continue this cycle no matter how much they win, no matter how much they provide. They will always be right back where they started with his people dying. With them always, always in danger unless they do something. And that silly ass little piece of paper, the seemingly unimportant piece of paper, I feel like a savior right now. They found this piece of paper and it was about the principal. It was like, oh shit, what are you, what are you writers doing? Wasting our time with these two characters going to get a damn stupid letter coming back. What are you doing killing a second surprise character? That was forced. What are you doing? We're sitting here in uh, comment sections and on YouTube just beating them up. Just beating the writers up. The writers are Aaron right now. We're just beating their ass over this stupid thing that they inserted into our show the letter the thing we complained about they insert it into the episode you know what i mean <laughs> but that is what i love about the writing that is the shit that i love and i think that shit is important when you go back and rewatch it you can either write it off as oh this this is just recycled recycling storyline and mirroring storyline in order to tell the story a specific way is completely different and i will argue and this is coming from somebody who originally didn't even like it i didn't like the double death i didn't like how they had no nope, i still don't like it I'll, I'll never like how they filmed it you know but the idea of having rosita taking the shot and the idea of mirroring it the way they did was fantastic. I still don't like the Rosita stuff, the way they cut it, the way they did a commercial and all that, whoop de whoop Yeah, I'll never like that. It just looks too cheap. It looks too cheap to be on The Walking Dead. Everything else with the structure, with the setup, I loved it. I absolutely loved it, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Let me know what do you think of the letter. Let me know what do you think of mirroring episode one and episode eight, and Rick finally realizing that no matter how much they win and provide for Negan, at the end of the day, they still lose. Put your thoughts and opinions in that comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn. Subscribe now.